Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ventures Podcast. Today's episode is pretty special. I know most people just listen to this podcast, but we're going to be talking about metaverses, specifically the metaverse that Yuga Labs has pumped out called The Other Side. I and my guest, Jesse Bryan, got to participate in the first voyage this past Saturday, and it was incredible. I mean, it blew. I came in pretty skeptical. I'm like, why are people going to use Yuga Labs' as metaverse? Uh, not only was the technology and the experience incredible, but it became obvious how not only gaming, but all the brands, all the influencers, how everybody's going to start using this thing to do all kinds of fascinating, not only games, but experiences to help people in real life. So I, again, I'm going to overlay some video on this. So if you are listening to it, go to wclittle.com. There you can actually watch the video of this recording with Jesse Bryan. He's big into NFTs. I've uh, had him on the podcast a few times before, um, and his insight is incredible. I, if you can't watch this online, totally cool. You can listen. It's still super applicable if you're just listening on your podcast player, right? Even, even if you're watching this, you can just search for ventures and you, it should show up and you, it, you, you should be able to listen. Um, but you can visit, uh, I'll put in the show notes, Jesse's Twitter, my Twitter at WC Little, and then I've started a new Twitter that's specifically focused on Web3 and Impact called Impact Ape. I'm using my board Ape 1145. Uh, also wears black t-shirt, uh, has kind of an angry face, angry at injustice in the world. So if you follow Impact Ape, again, that's at impact underscore ape. I'm gonna put some footage, cause I took some, some a, 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 a screen capture uh, video while I was in the other side, that first voyage. So in this episode, we talk about what that was, what the implications are, uh, why this matters, um, why it's way more than just gaming. And so I'm delighted to be able to share this with you. So please enjoy this conversation with Jesse Bryan. All right, Jesse, welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. So what happened? You and I both went in to uh, the first voyage of the metaverse, mm -hmm. the other side. Um, yep. What? So what was your experience? What What happened? So so what's been leading just for context. So other side land deal was a few months back. If you don't know what the other side is, it's really Yuga Labs metaverse. Right. Um, think a Fortnite type of a game. Uh, on all these different land parcels. Uh, a few months back, you could buy parcels of land. You didn't really know what you were getting. You were mostly, all of us were just trusting that, you know, don't fade Yuga is the big thing, is that Yuga is going to give us something wild and better than we'd hoped for. Um, and so you bought the land. And then, then for the last two weeks, really, there's been a couple of tests. And so I don't, did you participate in any of the tests? Well, no, I, I didn't get the test, but I was able to jump on the voyage. Yeah. Perfect. So the tests were just, you were in this big white room and uh, it was mostly just literally, it was just a test because, you know, this is all in browser and they're trying to get thousands of people yeah. all on the same, same place in browser and it's all working flawlessly. So there was a lot of these kind of like tests leading up to it. And so I did both of the tests also. And so that was everybody talk at the same time. Everybody use, you know, emotes at the same time to start mm -hmm. kind of like pressure testing the system. Now, leading into the first kind of other side experience, which was on Saturday, most of us were hoping for maybe we'll be able to walk around in the forest or check out pieces of one piece of land, something like mm. very basic, you know, uh, you walk through, you go, oh, this is neat. I can see the potential of this. But I don't think anybody was expecting what they delivered on Saturday, at, at least I wasn't. And, and no one I've talked to was anything but thoroughly impressed by what they saw. I mean, they didn't just give us, here's an island you can go walk around in. They built in the first quests, they built in the first boss battle. We were jumping between islands. It was unbelievable. It was, from a technical standpoint, I just, I couldn't quite wrap my head around it because I, I couldn't believe it was working and that a company that's a little over a year old has pulled this off. Um, I, I got a question for you, Will, because you and I were hanging out, you and I were hanging out pre other side test. 
and we were having a debate, a debate about how important the other side is going to be. And you were, what were you saying? <laughs> I, well, my position, and this was only a few days ago, my, I was curious about what was going to draw the mass market into the other side versus the 20 other metaverses out there. Sure. Good question. And, and I, maybe it's because I didn't participate in those first couple of tests or whatever, but um, let's just say after Saturday morning, <laughs> yeah. not only is the technology so incredibly with M squared and improbable and Yuga, right? Those three basically teamed up to yep. you log in with a browser, you connect your wallet, and it takes over your full screen and you're in like the best in class video game you can think of, right? Uh -huh. And how they pulled that off, the way they walked us through the voyage, it instantly made me think, okay, yes, gaming is huge. It's really hard to, it's hard to overstate how huge gaming itself will be, but now layer on yeah. the co-building, the web three, the NFTs, the, the ability for entrepreneurs, to do their thing, the ability for brands to do their thing. Now I, now I get it. <laughs> what, now what, I get what, what, so at, let me, because when we were talking about this, I was like, nope, they're going to crush it. Right. <laughs> and I was like, and every major brand is going to need to own an island in the other side. Yeah. If you right. look at the advantage they have. So, so Facebook was trying to stand up, stand up a currency. They couldn't get it to catch. Yugo was able to stand up ApeCoin. It caught, Right. Um, everybody's talking about wanting to build a, you know, an interoperable metaverse that people love. People keep talking about it. You drop into the other side and you're there for two minutes and you go, oh, they're, they're not just winning, they're dominating, right? Yeah. Some of the biggest players in the world can't keep up with what they're doing. And once you add in the personalized piece, which is massive, that people haven't really, uh, I think, considered the repercussions of yet, which is when you log in, you are your personality. The same, the same kind of, because um, remember, you have you have your NFT as your kind of identity, but now you can extend that into a gaming world. I don't know about you, but I was going and meeting up with all my friends. Mm. So like we would all find the same spot and I was running around with Jams and all these other folks, mm. you know, from some of our groups. And it was so much fun. It was just mm. absolutely wild. And when we got into the boss fights and the giant codas, because what they're doing is it's not just, a lot of these metaverse plays to me feel like, like Roblox style and they almost put something in the market and goes, you could see how someday maybe this could be cool. Right. That's not what happened on Saturday. Yeah. As soon as you dropped in, you were like, I, I woke my, my sons up, you know, I was like, I woke the kids up and I was like, you got to see this. And they were all playing and they were like, yeah, this is wild. And I go, and wait till they add in the ability to do like mining on your own land where you can actually make money off of your property wait till they add in the ability for you to build on top of your land and you could build you could build a gucci shop you could build a university you could build whatever you want on these properties you literally own the property um and every major brand is going to need to have an island in this space where you could go in and not just see their goods but to experience their story right, right. and and if you're not paying attention to this like <laughs> If you're not paying attention to this, it's kind of like, it's very similar. Think of these islands as your new website, mm. right? If you're trying to get in front of a fluent, early adopter, tech savvy, in essence, like the tastemakers of the future, if you're not a part of this, you're going to miss that audience. Yeah. Yeah. And they, right? I, so, so the brand the repercussions are massive. Huge. Yeah. The audience is going to be huge. That was the big takeaway for me is like one, obviously we know the gaming market is huge. But combine that huge gaming market with the brands that are trying to advertise to all the people that they're trying to advertise to, all the influencers that are trying to grow their audiences, et cetera, et cetera. I do, I do think, based on now what I've seen on Saturday, that this will be a new, the technology is so far advanced. The gameplay was fun. Everyone was yep. running around having a good time. You can see how all kinds of different games and quests and learning opportunities and all the promise of the metaverse could ac actually come together with Web3, with all the different token dynamics and NFTs and um, yeah, DAOs coming together and doing interesting things. It's like, we've seen hints of it, right? In different metaverses and different yeah. ways, in different MMOs of the ways that the community comes together, but, but the promise of how this actually impacts the world IRL, that's where things get interesting, right? Yep. I mean, you and I were talking to our friend Michelle about this, and she said, so is it kind of like 
like a Fortnite thing where you go and you like play a game with friends or is it more like a questing thing or is it more like a platform for people to go and hang out like which is it and it was like all of them all of it because depending on what you want to do with your island like if you want to turn your island into like a you know a crazy quest with puzzles everywhere you can do that if you want to turn your island into an online university you can do that if you want to turn it into a shop so that's what's so interesting about it and then even the basic stuff that people are really understanding the repercussions of the first quest that we have had was was to find a pair of glasses it said someone broke their glasses in nft nyc we need to find their glasses and one of the players actually found the glasses they were on top of a barrel Mm. well those glasses were the glasses from a project called Ten Thousand true uh fans um, in essence, and that 10,000 true fans, they're going to be the outfitters for the metaverse is what it's looking like. And so from a brand perspective, think about like, if you've got all these very influential people running around the metaverse, do you want them wearing your hoodie? Do you want them wearing your shoes? Do you right. want them having your backpack on whether you're Gucci or Louis Vuitton or whoever, do you, what do you want them physically wearing? So what people haven't really started thinking about is is not only the really massive brand plays as far as out like physically outfitting and turning people into billboards in the metaverse, they haven't really thought about, in my opinion, how to build these incredible digital experiences and what's possible. Because if you go and read that light paper, which I also really like their approach to the light paper, yeah. right? Um, if you go and read that, they talk a lot about how like, this is your land. Like you can do with it whatever you want. Like there's an SDKs coming out. You'll be able to build on it. You'll build like great resources and kind of your own little economy. And so for me, the funny thing is if I'm a major brand right now, I'm shopping for land at the center of this thing, as close to the center as I can get. Because as, as it grows, the rings will grow out, but the center will always be at the center. And that's where the clubhouse is at. So if you're, I don't know, some of these, these bigger brands like the Budweiser's and the Gucci's and all that, I bet you they already have their land. And if they don't, it is going to get more and more expensive <laughs> like as, as people build out. Um, what was it about the light paper? Because you, you, when you texted me, you said you were impressed by the light paper. Yeah. What was it about that, the way they did that, that was interesting to you? Well, for, from a technology standpoint, one, they just na- they nailed it from the experience. I mean, just people with different uh, types of computers, with different bandwidth capabilities, were all reporting, this is amazing. So they, with, I, I don't know a ton about the M squared technology, but it's something uh, that worked <laughs> straight up. Granted, there were only 4,500 people in there. If it becomes... But think about that. There was 4,500 people at the same time in a browser. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, de- they obviously rendered it and then they, they figured out a way to stream it to the browser. So it was really light on the, on the client side, right? And, and in the grand scheme of things, 4,500 people isn't a ton. If it's 45 million, right? If we're talking to simultaneous users, you know... And, and, now, thankfully, other gaming com- communities have solved this in terms of multiple server loads. And like, so we'll see if they can leverage sort of gaming best practices for handling, uh, for, for scaling out. So when, when you're talking about 45 million uh, or, or more realistically, like 450,000, right? If, you, if you're talking at a, at a couple of order magnitudes higher, how is that going to scale? I, at this point, I don't think any of us are concerned that they are going to figure that out. Um, <laughs> And it's going to be a pretty big deal. But as it relates to the white paper, just like as a software engineer, just how they are even just hinted at what their their o, like ODK, other other side development kit, right? Yep. Basically, how their SDK is going to is going to work, and and how we're going to be able to work with it. They just did it the right way. I mean, they're they're going to set it up the right way to make it as easy as possible for developers to to build on it, and for people who aren't software engineers, they're going to have all these custom you know, WYSIWYG type, you know, custom builder thing. So you can put this on your land or this on your land or this on your land um, and, and, you know, doll it up. Other metaverses have similar type things. So, but sure. it just seems like, as you mentioned, it seems like they are very far ahead. And based on the experience we just had, it's, uh, it's, it's quite phenomenal. It's all the things are dovetailing at once. It's the technology is catching up. So that a brand that's, you know, just a little over a year old can actually pull something like this off, which is just wild. When most of us bought our land, we thought we were a couple years out before we could have the experience we had on Saturday. That was my assumption. It's like, well, it's just going to take a couple of years before we can really. So the fact that already you had 5,000 people 
experiencing this and freaking out from the beginning. And, and also the founders are coming out saying things like the first trip was good. The next trip will be better. Like they're like, Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, right. And, mm-hmm. and the repercussions, like it's been the first time to, that I've really been able to start to understand also even the way they laid out the land in the circle and all that. I, I really started making the connections from a brand perspective and otherwise how important it is um, to be there. Right. It's kind of like saying, like, if you go to Manhattan now, well, and you're a big retailer, where do you want to be? Right. Like there's a section of town that all the big, you know, like literally the row, right. Where you're like, if we got Gucci and everyone else, if you're not there, you don't exist. Yeah. You know? And so for me, it became very clear of like, Everything you need for actual real estate, you're going to need in the other side. So you're going to need, you know, um, you're going to need land management. You're going to need architects. You're going to need, because people are going to want, there's a lot of very wealthy people and other folks like that that go, I don't necessarily want to build something, but I want a, an insane, you know, mansion, or I want a building built out for whatever. So you're going to see the industries you're going to see built on top of the, uh, uh, on the other side is going to be staggering where all of a sudden you know, a couple of years from now, there will be people, their full-time job is just metaverse architects. And all they do all day long is build the craziest, you know, yeah, like buildings and things like that inside the other, and they will be booked out. Right. Yeah. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Totally. Like the economy that you could build on top of this is just absolutely staggering. Now, I agree. Now, let's get to the details. Before you were saying island, you were just referring to plots of land, right? Because there's going to be... Yes, plots of land. That's right. There's going to be initially, what, 120,000 of these or 220,000? Yeah, I think there's 100,000 initially and then and then another 100,000 coming. And okay. from what I understand, and, and what they teased at was pretty much the other 100,000 is for people that are participating mm. and actually helping build. And so some folks, like one of the things that we got if you went on this trip is that your other deed actually now shows there's a new category. It's a dynamic NFT. So now if you logged in and you went on this, it now shows that you were there on the first trip. And so all of a sudden these badges, and, and so we don't know how that's going to play a part in the value of your land in the future or any of these types of things. But on the back now, it flips over and you can actually see almost like, it's almost like a passport yeah. <laughs> of how much have you participated in this ecosystem and something about it's literally changing your land. Mm. right because now on the front it's a new category and so what they have planned i mean who knows but there's something about tying together how active you are with the value of your land and i I, it's hard for me not to think that that will have some sort of repercussions when they go to distribute the next tranche of land yeah but 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 based on the roadmap we've seen so far that that two hundred thousand, that's it right i'm sure in the future right but like you know, and that's a lot of parcels of land. You know, it really is. Yeah, we'll have for to the see size of the NFT the, market right now. Like how we'll have to see how big that each parcel of land is. Is it just a, like a little? But Nicole, well, I think the parcels of land we were on, we got to go to we got to go to two different islands we're aware of. Right, there was the first island you went to where you had like Curtis and Blue, the Codas, and we had to go around, and um, all these Codas got fired in almost like. Right like meteorites and we all had to gather underneath them because these these codas were stuck in like crystals right and everybody had to shout and break the crystals in order to release them and then we followed the codas to another world where we actually fought a giant coda and it was really wild if you haven't seen the videos we should link to some videos so you can actually i'm gonna overlay some videos oh yeah i I took screenshot while i was in there perfect i took some screen videos so i think i'll I'll add some of that in as we're talking here yeah And, and so as you're so the funny thing about this whole experience is we know this much of it. So we're, ex- we're discovering the lore in like real time. It's clear that Yuga has this massive thing mapped out, but they haven't communicated a ton around how will, how will, you know, resources work. And there's a huge thing around artifacts. Like the in-game economy has yet to really be, you know, explained yet. And so there's a lot more coming, but from an execution standpoint, I just don't know how they could have done a better job um yeah with this like it's it's absolutely mind we weren't thinking this was going to be in for us we thought that at least i thought this was a couple years away right and then a hundred percent we log in it's like wow this is very built out like it is i can see how we co-build this together we as builders right 
<laughs> yep. I mean, the engine is, the engine's ready. Well, and there's, a, there's an interview with the Cole, the CEO, who's absolutely brilliant. And, um, it's from a few months back, but if you could, if we can find it, we can put it in the show notes. But she talks about they were talking about how how expensive apes had gotten and mutants had gotten, and she said there's something coming that will allow more people to participate at a better at a cheaper price point, pretty much, right? And so we now know that she's probably was talking about the land sale. So I'm also, if you look at the floor right now, you can get a piece of land for like what two point five ish ETH, two point eight mm. something like that. Mm. I don't think they if they if they put another hundred thousand out there and then back out however much they give to people that are participating. Let's say they put another, I don't know, sixty thousand out there. I don't think it doesn't sound like Nicole's main thing is how do I make sure this is like the most expensive land. I think they're trying to get the price point down mm. so that if you were able to scrape together like half an ether or something, you could now go in and build an entire world. In an entire economy for your own business or otherwise, like I, it, it, there's the really high end land, which is you know a couple hundred ETH, which is like the chaos parcels and stuff like that. But the cool thing about what's happening now, especially with ETH being lower, and I think with these new parcels coming out, is that it feels very intentional to me that this team is trying to expand the amount of people that have access to this world because in order to go into and build like this whole economy on your parcel of land and all that kind of stuff, you don't have to have a ape that's a hundred plus ETH and you don't have to have a mutant that's 30 plus ETH or whatever. You can just have a parcel of land that maybe you got for, I don't know, one ETH or something like that. And you can go in and build the whole thing out. Like that's really awesome that you can, you don't have to have. And even the, it seems like the generic characters they give you, those look awesome too, which was those really cool kind of like almost Groot looking, you know, stone characters, whatever. Um, and so my guess is that, that was, that's what Nicole was hinting at, which is we're opening up a new economy where much more people can, you know, you know, get involved. And it's really nice thing, too, is that it's going to come down to their creativity, right? Like we're seeing this in other communities like the clones where they released all the 3D files. And it's absolutely mind bending the stuff that because clones came out and they're like, here's all your 3D files. Plus, they created a bunch of tutorials that actually taught you how to turn your 3D files into animations and lenses a- ar lenses and all this kind of stuff so i think what yuga is gonna do is not only you know go hey here's how your land works but here's some really helpful like in essence teach us mm. how to build out our own digital worlds so if you want to build a roller coaster on your land and charge whatever half an ape coin to ride it cool all that money i'm sure a small percentage is, is going to go back to yuga but the vast majority of that money is going right in your pocket mm. right which is a game changer because a lot of like my kids build like t-shirts and stuff for Roblox and it's wild how little they get. So if mm. somebody buys one for a couple of Roblox or whatever, by the time, the amount of Roblox they actually get after the rake and everything else, it's so insignificant. And then I'm like, how much of this, how many Roblox would you have to have in order to exchange it for real money? And it was something like a million, which is like $300 only three hundred dollars worth of like so the the economics it's like it's mm. you know it's like a dave and busters type of ticket thing where you'll never really win but it's fun and maybe you have a couple of roblox to be able to build your own you know buy your own t-shirts and stuff like that the game economy at, that it's looking like that yuga's going for is completely different mm. you could legitimately go in there and build out a world that brings people value or like a brand experience and you're and that's your land those are your resources you can own that piece of the economy, which, I mean, if you go look at the map and how big it is with 100,000 parcels of land, all of a sudden, to me, I go, that's 100,000 businesses, right? Yeah. And then it's going to be 200,000 businesses. And people, and it will be the kind of thing where people are like, parcel 697, you've got to go check it out. They just launched this new, they're having a rave tonight. And Dead Mouse is DJing, and it costs you two ETH to get in. And like that stuff will be happening at scale across this whole universe Mm. and then and then there's going to be all these cool badges and stuff you're going to unlock where it'll be like oh gucci's doing this experience where they built this crazy runway thing and if you go there you can win not only the digital hoodie but then you'll also get to mint that and do a physical hoodie like what brands the big problem we're having right now is that brands that are getting into this space don't know shit about it Mm. yeah and it's embarrassing because you see them come in and they'll do a drop a lot of celebrities do this. They'll do a thing where they'll come into the space, buy buy two or three NFTs, 
And then they'll be like, oh, by the way, in 24 hours, I'm going to launch my own project. And you're like, you don't know anything about these people you're selling to. You don't care about the community. You've clearly only been here for 24 hours and you're trying to figure out how can I take that? What can I give? Yeah. And most of these brands show up and they have a web two mentality. So they'll come in and go, oh, I'm going to sell these people a bunch of like, I don't know, a package for merch or something. And then I'm going to go dark for six months while I work on it. And they don't understand that you can't do that in yeah. web three. You need to be communicating with your audience minimum once a week in some form or another. You need to be doing quarterly campaigns, all this kind of stuff. And so the funny thing, Will, is like, what could brands do in the other side? It's going to be mu- like face meltingly cool what they can do. But what they're probably going to start off by doing is something super lame, just like on how to extract value from their customers. It'll just be like, here's a shop, come buy stuff for us. But they're not going to give us a reason to. Versus they should be thinking about it more from an experience standpoint, like at Disneyland, where you built this awesome roller coaster. And at the end of the roller coaster, except for the gift shop. <laughs> oh, now you've given me, right? Versus most brands show up and they go, we have a gift shop, buy stuff from us. And then people are like, why should I care? Think about it in terms of like, start with the story and the experience. Give me a reason. And at totally. the end, you could do absolutely incredible uh, business and margins in this space yeah, like there's this. Experiment- but experiment- you can't half-ass it. Yeah, there's experiential marketing IRL, right? At all these events yeah. and festivals and stuff. And the people that do something interesting and capture our attention, usually then, you know, we, we develop a relationship with that so brand. Works. In the metaverse, it's just going to be next level. It's going to be next level. And yeah. right now, if I was these brands, you should be building right now. Yeah. You should be looking at this light paper and going, oh, they're talking about like, if oh, if it's going to be built in Unity, you should be, you should be making mock-ups of the crazy Citadel to... Budweiser or whatever you're going to do, right? If you're going to build like a sports world for, you know, ESPN, you should be doing that right now because whoever is in this space early, the amount of traffic, right? Because the crazy thing that blows my mind, Will, is we go on this trip and we've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. And both of us are like, holy shit. The other side is this is going to eat the yeah, world. I was super. How super much skeptical. general market yeah. coverage has it had? Oh, I don't, I don't even. I don't even listen to the general market coverage. Has I, there been anything? Literally, I haven't heard any. Has it been like a TechCrunch article about it or whatever? I haven't heard any. <laughs> and so I'm sitting here watching this, going, "Oh my god, I bet the coverage tomorrow is going to be bonkers." And then you go look it up, and everybody's like, "Whatever, NFTs are dumb," and you're like. Oh, dude, you are so far out of the loop. It's wild. So it's funny. It's just a small group of us looking at each other going like, does anybody, is anybody paying attention to this? And by and large, the answer is absolutely not. Yeah, right. Yeah, again, I was super skeptical coming in. I'm like, why are people going to use this? Um, You know, I have enough of a gaming background. I've invested in gaming companies and streaming companies, et cetera that I get how absolutely huge the markets are, how avid the, the fans are, how much time people spend to this. Again, my arc and my own land that I own in the other side, I'm gonna be oriented toward how does this help humans flourish IRL? How can this actually, yep. impact, right? My ape impact underscore ape on Twitter. I'm gonna plug my own ape new Twitter account is all gonna be about, yes, there's gonna be exhibits and things in, in the other side, um, but it's going to be about how can we help people in their communities in the real world. So, uh, in can addition- I set that up a little bit? Yeah, based go. on what you and I were talking about. Yeah. So, what we were talking about is once these things started clicking, you and I started geeking out pretty hard. And it was like the Impact Ape Island. What if we almost built all of these for all these amazing projects you want to support from dead languages to real escape from the sex trade, all these types of things. Like, why don't we build almost these experiences where you can go through an amazing experience, really get educated on the water crisis and, and all sorts of things like that. Yes. And then at the end, it's just like, a, just like a normal kind of like exhibition. You walk through and go like, would you consider donating a couple of ApeCoin to help us build new wells? And I'm like, but think about how big your property is, Will. We could keep expanding these almost amazing experiences where you don't just hear about all the impact that you can have as you give and help, um, you know, and and also the amount of things that you're doing, you're, you're, you're serving on a bunch of different boards, helping all sorts of different types of causes around the world. And it's like, don't, you don't have to pick one anymore, Will. We could build an experience for each one where the, where people can go, hey, go to the Impact Ape Islands, 
look at all these incredible things and just give like whatever one eight coin it's five bucks and guess what you helped us drill a new well and then we can give them a digital t-shirt that says you know i drilled a well in africa like the think of we started thinking about it differently like it's not just the land it's like this could be a actual hub for doing amazing things irl and you can build it all on your land will that's it so i hope we'll see how big these land parcels are right i think i have four or five of them or something Mm -hmm. um and it sounds like they're going to decouple a lot of the you know they'll decouple the codas the codas and stuff yeah weapons and whatnot um which that alone will be quite interesting but yeah we'll see do, yeah. do you have any idea how relatively big these I, I literally are? think i think that they're both of the lands we were on um seem to be about the same size the, from think, the and it's a, all of that was one plot yes yes no way yes so this is gonna be that's a that's a huge yes it's you know, a universe will in game feet that's uh, gate, people I mean, are th- people are sleeping on this. These are like miles like, and miles of game. Yeah, game. yeah. This is not. This is not like so a little what, tiny block. No, in that's why I was saying for for for. Yeah, no. This is why I was saying for impact tape. It's literally going to be the kind of thing where it's like, here's an entire experience around educating people on how you know the sex trade and the need for actual help, right? Yeah. And here's yeah. you could build it. Will think about it more like above your island. Think about it like Disneyland. Where you could have future land and you could have th- these plots of land are huge. And remember, you can jump between different lands. The coolest thing about it is uh, Yuga keeps also hammering the drum of interoperability. So I literally think someday I'll be able to be in the Clone X world and I'll be able to go through a portal and I drop into Impact Ape land and I'll be able to go to my, my land. It, and so these, what these brands can do <laughs> is going to be absolutely face melting will and the impact and micro donations and the things that you could do and building status symbols into it for when people are either Mm. a just like doing cool missions for you or giving to some amazing cause the things you could do i mean there's going to be a whole thing of like billboards and everything irl is going to move over so like there will be a business and all they do is go how much how much would i have to pay you a month to have a billboard on your land Right. That, it, it will be all of that stuff is coming. And the cottage industries that are about to be stood up around this ecosystem, it's going to be staggering. The funny thing is five years from now, all of this will feel obvious. Right now, there's probably a bunch of people listening going like, that sounds crazy. No one's going to build, you know, billboards on the other side. In the same way that I'm sure that when you are still like, I don't know, logging in through like a terminal of the internet and somebody said like there's going to be pop-up ads you're like why would you advertise on this this is just for communicating information right it's like all of that stuff is going to happen but understand that it's going to happen 10 times faster than you think that's what now adoption might take longer but this industry is moving so fast you know it's you're going to blink and it will be everywhere Mm. Yeah, it's one of those things like no one knows until they do, and then everybody does. <laughs> That's how it's going to feel. And again, the the source of my skepticism wasn't you know I I knew that they were going to build something awesome. I thought maybe it was a couple years away, um, and I knew that the sort of the yuga community, which is not small, right? I mean, I went to a couple of those yeah, nights at sure. Ape Fest. Yeah. That's a lot of people yeah. around there, right? Uh huh. But I yeah. just thought it might have been this sort of insular, it just you know what like maybe 50 100,000 people that are super into this meta this metaverse that's called the other side it didn't click to me until saturday that one the technology is amazing there's going to be all kinds of games that are just going to be really fun for people whether they own one of these deeds or apes or mutants or dogs or whatever or yep. not yep and then two the big brands are because all of the influencers are going to be there the people who 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 can reach all these audiences from a pure economics and marketing standpoint, the big brands are going to come in. And when the big brands come in, the influencers come in. When the big brands and influencers are in, then then you're starting to talk about millions and millions, if not billions of people who are, might be interacting with this metaverse. Then you see how it's game changing. And, and also, Will, people don't think about it. They're not thinking about it in terms of how do new things start? Mm. well new things start small it's kind of like elon's like i'm gonna put out a roadster and people go like who cares it's just a roadster for you know classically like oh it's a roadster for rich tech guys or whatever and you're like you don't understand he's working it out 
Mm. The goal was not the test, was not the roadster. It was always how do I to get to like a twenty to thirty thousand dollar mass market all electric vehicle and change the world. So the funny thing is, there's always the people on the front end that go, "That's dumb. I don't want a roadster." And you go like, "It's not about the roadster. <laughs> right. It's about the road map." Yeah. That's it. Right. So right now you can go, line. I don't like, I don't like video games and I don't like, you know, JPEGs and monkeys. And you go, my God, you're not paying attention. <laughs> you really think this is about JPEGs and monkeys. It would kind of be like saying the first website I went to on the internet was, uh, you know, whatever, uh, web crawler movie reviews. Why would anyone want to use the internet? It's just to find out what movies play. And you go, Oh my God, that's just <laughs> one thing you can do on the internet. It's a good analogy. And they're, and all they're doing is looking for reasons why it won't work. And meanwhile, they get their, they get their, they get innovated into the graveyard. Yeah. Right. That's and it. they don't even see it coming. They just sit on their shelf feeling superior why someone eats their lunch. Yeah. If I'm Facebook right now, you bet your ass. I've been a part of every one of these other sites, like launches. I'm studying their playbook. Like you wouldn't believe I'm doing everything I can to acquire as much of their organization. Like, you got to, I guarantee you that's happening right now. Yeah, for sure. Right. If for you're sure. Blizzard, which means Microsoft, if you're, if you're not paying attention because it's going to start with something like gaming and eventually it will be where you go and do brainstorming sessions with your team. Yeah. Right. And it's going to be where you build your whole new brand. Apparel brands are going to start as metaverse brands and they're going to sell them a bunch of digital products and you're going to have the most badass flexes in the other side and they're going to take that capital and they're going to build an IRL and they're going to eat the world and then tr classic uh classic fashion companies that aren't paying attention it's going to they're going to be like what's going on I don't know how to adapt well guess what in the metaverse they stood up a digital store they built with a digital architect they built a cool experience you started buying digital products they gave you in essence, a bunch of digital files in exchange for all of their money up front. So they're fully capitalized. They gave away zero. They have their entire market, like, like they they give away zero equity in their company. And now they can come after uh, web two brands with a vengeance, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I mean, and will the, the speed that this is happening at, uh, I've never personally seen an industry that's moving. I remember like we all knew, you know, back when we did like Cinepro and stuff like that, when the app store first came out, we all knew that the app store was going to be huge, yeah. but look, it took a while. Took a while. Yeah. It took a while. Right. But looking at what Yuga has done in a year, how, how is that? I mean, it's, it's how is that? Yeah. Yeah. To have all the artists in New York this year performing to, yeah, to have <laughs> right. Eminem and Snoop do their video that they all put out their video and launched it there. I'm just saying, Will, like, this is what, there's got to be a technical term for this, but that almost like a chronological snobbery type of a thing where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, this hasn't happened before. It's like, you don't understand, like, disrup disruption is always, there's always, <laughs> there's always the people that don't think it's going to happen until it happens, right? Yeah, right. And so if you're looking at this right now and you're a technologist or a business person or a brand and you just go, I don't get it, cartoon monkeys, video game thing. Just know, just it's like trying to put that aside and look at it from the standpoint of what is this going to be in five years? What are the repercussions of this down the road? It stops st instead of starting with why this isn't going to work, start with if this was to work, what would the repercussions be in the future? Yeah. And then at least you can game it out. Other folks, they see it and they start with they roll their eyes and they walk that way. That's the blockbuster approach. Yeah, that's right. Because this is coming and it's not going to stop. It's just getting started. It's good. It's good. All right. Let's stop there. Uh, let's, let's do another one after the next voyages or whatever, as we sort of learn more. Um, this is real. I'm just, I'm going to, this is all my friends in tech and my family that have no idea what's going I'm going to send them this episode. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like I'm going to overlay well, as we've been talking and maybe a little bit in the intro, 99.9999% of people just listen, but maybe this will get people to, uh, to check it out, the, the video version of this. And then I'll link to Jesse. I'll, your your Twitter is what? At Jesse Bryan? Yep, just Jesse, at Jesse Bryan. Yep. Okay. So, so that people can hit you up on Twitter and uh, continue the conversation with you. I'm WC Little Perfect. on Twitter, but my new Impact Ape is Impact underscore Ape, uh, which is going to be all about uh, highlighting Web3 and social impact projects 
um, uh, all, all around the world. So um, this is good. Jesse, really appreciate your insight. Thanks for your time. Happy to be here. Thanks, Will. All right, a couple quick things before you go. Number one, I have a general newsletter where I write about technology and startups and health science and teaching people to code. And I write about a variety of different subjects that we talk about on this show. So if you go to wclittle.com, there you'll be able to subscribe and you'll also be able to subscribe to particular topics. If you're just interested in one or a few of them, you'll be notified right when I publish new content in those areas. Number two, my partners and I at Proto Ventures have a portfolio company called Startup Rocket. If you go to startuprocket.com, there you'll be able to receive coaching guides and customize an operations framework for you and your team and your advisors to be on the same page in terms of what is the appropriate next step for you and your entrepreneurial journey. And finally, if you wouldn't mind leaving a review anywhere that you have listened to this podcast or watched this podcast, it'd be super helpful to help those who might be interested in consuming this content as well. Thank you.